Hello, it's me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to one of those fun, riveting videos while I take you on the journey that is Jesus, my wig install. So, this is gonna be another one of those start to finish videos where I show you exactly everything I do, take you along the journey and process of, you know installing my wig from straight out of the box. Today's wig I'm gonna be working in is working with is from V Show Hair Company. Very cute packaging by the way. Like y'all see that cute. I always wonder with these packaging it's like is it a PR box or does everybody get the cute box? But straight to the nitty gritty. Okay, got some lashes, some wig cap, all of that. But honestly we don't really care about that. This is what we care about. So they sent me a 30 inch wig, 250% density, and it's a straight wig. This one itching for like a nice, sleek, clean side part look, like the little C curve part. You know, you, you know what I'm saying. So hopefully this will be the wig to give me that. Okay, she's thick, she's full, here's a look. So I believe this is a 13 by six parting. I'm kind of like bummed because I really want it to be like 13 by six all around you know like it's just six inch parting down in the middle section which is cool but dang y'all i want six inch parting all around like you know side to side so first thing i'm definitely be doing is bleaching the knots the knots are not pre-bleached if you can see and for my beginners newbies out there wondering what are knots you see those little black dots at the base, right? Those little black dots down there, those are the knots. And if you're trying to go for a scalp type of look, you can't have those black dots showing. Like that's not giving scalp, that's giving wig. So you wanna bleach it with a hair bleach to make it light colored. So it looks like it's like, you know, coming out of a scalp. And of course we'll be plucking the hairline cause the hairline needs to be plucked for it to be more natural. But okay. Okay, let's get into it. So first thing first, before I start, I'm just gonna spray back the hairline. It's already pretty pushed back. There's no like baby hairs in the front, but I just always do this. I make sure I push back all of those hairs. Oh my God. Sorry guys, the camera just fell. Damn girl. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Anyways, so yeah, like I was saying, hairline pushed back. Now I'm just combing everything back. I've heard people say they use the hairspray too to kind of help create a barrier so that it doesn't like get any bleach onto the hair. I personally call BS on that because I don't think it helps kind of create a barrier in my opinion. But maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Gonna make so I'm excited to try this out today. This is a new bleaching powder. I've heard a lot about this, the Blonde Brilliance. I got this from Sally's. I've been using the Carol's, the Carol's BW powder bleach, but I feel like my bleaching skills, I don't know, they, the knots are not bleaching the way I want them to bleach. So I decided to kind of just invest because this is more expensive than the regular standard BW powder. But I've heard a lot of professionals use this. It claims to lift up to nine levels which is more than the carol b one does and it also is supposed to have some moisturizing and conditioning moisturizing and conditioning effects so it's also supposed to, i guess like protect your hair because bleaching is a process that can you know damage your hair in the long term so hopefully this was worth the money this was what i believe twenty dollars the instructions so that i should use 15 20 to 25 volume developer normally i use 40 but i want to follow the instructions on this because instructions are there for a reason so let's see if this 20 volume will be as effective i wish it came with a scoop like the carols one does but that's cool i'm just gonna do i guess two scoops hopefully that's enough let me add just a little bit more 
That's a lot. Damn. Okay. And then go in. It says on the thing. To, then go in. It says on the thing to use a one to one and a half ratio. <laughs> I said I'm even over here measuring. But I just like to gradually add it and mix it till it gets to a certain consistency that I want. That was a big, big amount. Oops. Okay, still a little bit cakey and chalky. A pretty good consistency for me. I like it to be nice and thick. That way it's not like running off, you know? So always make sure you like test it to make sure it's not running off. Nice and thick, but still spreadable and creamy. All right, that's pretty good for me. I feel like maybe I just a little bit more. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Because it can't be too thick where it's out here not even just like touching the knots, you feel me? I like to do my bleaching, you know, having my wig face down, ASF or whatever. Excuse my French. I'm just trying to get the best positioning. Using a popsicle stick to apply the bleach. You can use anything that helps you. You can use a plastic knife, plastic spoon, a hairbrush dye like this, but just don't use anything metal because metal does affect the reaction because this is a chemical reaction. Like apply enough pressure where you're covering the knots, but not too much as where you're starting to like push too much and it's starting to bleed. If you need to take breaks and flip the wig over to check yourself, then go ahead. It's your wig. Don't mess it up. Take your time. I'm going to go ahead with some foil and place that under the wig just to help, you know, speed up the processing time, especially given this 20-inch, 20 20 volume developer. But hopefully it works just as well as the regular ones. This part gives me stress because I'm always scared that I'm going to like push the bleach and start bleeding the hair. another layer on top just to really seal it all up cool all right so it's been what a good 40 ish minutes as you can see the knots yeah they're bleached for sure these are still black let's kind of push it deep enough but like there's a lot of like yellow knots over here forming because since these knots up here are not covered with bleach, you know, there's no chance of them processing. The ones that are covered, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, are definitely very yellow and very ready to be washed. Okay guys, so I have made the executive decision to go in and bleach the hair one more time. Like, like I feel like it's just... It's good, but I just really want this install to eat. So I'm gonna bleach it one more time. I feel safe doing this because one, I did use 20 volume developer, which is much gentler or less harsh, I guess, than 40. And this bleach that I bought is meant to be more conditioning and moisturizing, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna go bleach this again because I really just want these knots to hit. But yeah. Okay, for the second bleaching, it's mainly up here where I'm going to be styling that I care the most about. So I'm not going to worry too much about getting the bleach back down there. But this time, I'm going to put a little more pressure. And really try to get those knots. I'll start from here. Alright, cool. So you see how like the knots are really covered now? Like it's really over them? That's what I'm looking for. And we proceed. Now normally, because I don't get perfectly bleached knots all the time, I kind of just work with it and have to figure out finessing later. 
But since I'm really trying to work on my technique these days, that's why I'm going back in to re-bleach it. So you don't have to if you're not starting perfect at first. Nothing is perfect at first. Do you get lots of questions like, do you have to bleach? Do you have to bleach knots for an install? You don't have to do anything when it comes to a wig. Like you can really just put it on the way it is and figure it out. But you know, if you're really trying to go for that scalp look, and if your wig is more like one of those cheaper wigs where they did literally nothing for you and you have to do all the work, it's just not gonna give the same look. That's all I gotta say. And then I'm just gonna put that foil on back on. Ooh. Good. And yeah, let her sit and process like before. Okay, y'all can see those knots are definitely bleached. Like black wear. This is after 30 minutes of re-bleaching. So I'm gonna wash it again. <laughs> Which is why it's important for you to sometimes like, you know, push that bleach a little bit to where you see it covering those knots so you can really get it. It's a bit scary, I know, because I was scared too. You know one TikTok phone? <laughs> Who was scared? I was scared. But you see that? Galpiana, baby. I'm going to use a combination of the blue and the orange to tint the lace. First, I'm going to use some of the blue. I do see some yellow and orangey tones in there. And I don't like to let this blue shampoo sit on my lace too long because I've realized, depending on what kind of lace it is, it can give it a bit of a weird tint after. So really, I come back in about like five minutes because it works pretty fast and wash it out. But I do like to make sure I'm scrubbing it in. Okay, can y'all see? Most of the knots are now a more brown, blonde, some even have turned basically invisible because they took the tone very well. And now it's looking more like it's coming out of your scalp, less coming out of a wig head. Lovely, love that. I've already gone ahead and washed the hair with some shampoo and conditioner. So now I'm just gonna let this hair air dry for the, over the night. Cause I like to, I don't like, you know, working with my hair when it's wet. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and talk to y'all about the plucking in our installation. Tomorrow. Okay, day two, we're back. The hair is fully air dried and it's time to pluck her. I'm just going in with some T-pins to help pull out the lace and pin it. I like to make sure I have the middle of the wig lined up to the little lines on my canvas head. If you don't have a canvas head and you're trying to become better at your wig making skills, then babe, get you a canvas head. You need one and not just a wig head like the styrofoam ones that you get for $5, an actual canvas head. I got this one from Amazon. I have a 23 inch one because I have a 23 inch circumference head. Get one that's your head size. They have different ones. It does what it's supposed to do because most of the styling I'm about to do today is going to be on this canvas head. Before I start plucking, I like to always part the hair down the middle. This is just to help me, one, work in sections and two, to avoid plucking in the middle part because like I've said before, whenever I pluck in the middle part, it just never looks right. So I always avoid my best of plucking in the middle part unless I'm like trying to like, you know, make the part wider. Ooh, this part go back real far. Show y'all the knots we did yesterday. Y'all see that? Yeah, very proud of those knots. I'm gonna go in with my very, very hot, hot comb and just press back the hairline. And it just literally helps me see everything. And it's easier to pull the knots when they're all like, you know, pushed back like this. Especially if the wig is dry. If your wig is wet, you can just like slick it back and do the same thing. But if you're plucking your wig dry, this is the way to go. 
and you can plug your wig wet or dry either way i used to like plucking my wigs wet before but i feel like sometimes since the wig is wet i can't tell how thick it's gonna be like the density of the hair so i end up like you know under plucking a lot i'm thinking yeah i really plucked that wig up and then once it's dry i'm like dang i did nothing at all but plucking wet the knots do come out easier because like it just has more slip to it but if you're gonna pluck dry but I would honestly say as a beginner, pluck your wig dry. It's really easy to over pluck as well when your wig is wet. Okay, so I don't know if you can see right here. The hairline's like slightly, literally the littlest bit pre-plucked in the front. So what I do is I usually like to just pull out the front part of the hairline. Doesn't matter if it's pre-plucked or not. I always like to start plucking behind the front. That just helps me from over plucking preventing bald spots all that good stuff and to help me preserve my baby hairs because sometimes I tend to over pluck that area push everything back to get it out of the way so I can see what's going on for plucking going in with my bestie my friend only tweezers I use the Revlon slant tip tweezer slant tip I like to pluck with the tip pointing forward you know this way and I pull and I pluck in a dragging backwards motion not an up and down but a back drag I always have my hand up here to help pull back the hair really nice and tight have my tweezers pointing you know tip tip pointing that way and I don't start directly in the middle I start a little bit off center and you're trying to pull the hair right out from the roots and then you skip a line, pluck a line, and just keep working your way down the line. But yeah, I just go in like a pluck a line, skip a line type of motion. And I'm not plucking in the same area. Like if you think like it looks like I'm plucking the same area, I'm just going higher up. When I'm done, I just go ahead and just push everything right back up. So I've gone ahead and just started plucking on my lap because I need a new I need a new wig stand, and that wig stand was not stable, and it was just affecting my plucking game. Like I don't know. So I'm just gonna do it old school way and just pluck on my lap. So here's the middle, right? Now what I do with the front hairs is I just start lightly dragging my tweezer back, right? And doing the same thing, plucking, skipping, plucking, skipping, like pluck, skip, pluck, skip, you know? And I do it very minimally on the front. I don't like to pluck too much or make too big of gaps. I just work my way down the hairline. Here I'm not even plucking in the front. I'm just creating more escape spaces in the back. I'm just trying to like clean up the back of the hairline some more. Right here is still pretty dense in my opinion, so I'm going to go in on this side and do some more plucking, but mainly in the back, not in the front. If you feel like you don't have that much control, you can also just like part out a lot more. Because sometimes I can't reach those back knots just from plucking in the front. I got to like really pull the hair out. And then I just go back in.
Okay, that's pretty good to me. Put this back up there. Pluck some more right here because it's looking a little dense. I'm just gonna create a little bit of gapage. The gaps in the front have to be very small. Like you can't have big old two type of gaps in the front. Like make sure you're not making wide gaps in the front. Just a little some light. Back hair is still a little bit dense. Well, let me stop. Let me stop because I don't want to start over plucking the hair. Actually, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit thick back here. But I guess it doesn't matter because I am going to be doing a side part too, and I'm going to see all that. And plucking your wig less just kind of helps preserve the longevity of it, you know? So I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. hello it's me <laughs> hi guys this is me doing a voiceover clearly and that's just because the audio in these next few clips was just really messed up so you couldn't hear what i was saying but basically this time i decided to go ahead and style the wig on my mannequin head given that i wanted to get a very nice and clean side part i showed you guys my inspiration photo whenever i am doing like side parts like these i'm still working on how to get them perfectly curved i always just have a inspo photo that i'm staring at literally staring at and just trying to figure out my best to replicate that onto the mannequin head it's easier on the wig head because i can see everything from all the different angles and i can just properly make sure i'm doing what i have to do you know i went ahead and put some um what's it called mousse on it and the reason why i put mousse mousse just helps the hair like move easier so i just use that to help me just get the hair to move and once i've figured out the part the way that i liked it i went ahead with my flat iron i'm sorry my hot comb and started to just press out the part the only tip i can really give when it comes to creating that curved side part is literally just get a photo and stare at it and keep doing it because i'm still trying to figure out exactly the science to getting the perfect curved part and it was kind of hard to finesse this given that the wig wasn't a full 13 by 6 from side to side so i had to like figure a way to curve it around where i still touch the um six inch parting space Once I carved out my part, I went ahead and straightened the hair on the mannequin head as well because I felt like it would just be easier to reach the roots of the hair while it's on the mannequin. I'm not really gonna show too many clips of this because straightening is pretty standard in my opinion, but I did wanna show what product I used to straighten and this is the 
Eva NYC Main Magic 10 in 1 primer. This just kind of works as a heat protector also to help produce I mean help reduce frizz and it adds a little bit of shine. So I just spray that into the hair and I'm using my flat iron at 410 degrees and just working my way right through it. I try to do smaller sections. I really wanted this hair to be nice and silky. The main part worth showing, I feel like in my opinion, is this area. I went ahead for the parts of the hair that was on the lace. I went made sure that I went through section by section and not just flat iron through the hair, but I also pressed a hot comb through each of these sections. This is gonna really ensure that you get a very flat, flat, flat result with your wig. And the smaller sections you use for this area, like the top of the wig, the better, because the wig will get really nice and flat. Like, y'all see how good this flat iron is? It's pressing the hair through. But yeah, that was just really it for styling. Okay. This took a bit to straighten, but she's nice and straight. It's so long, but I'm really excited to install this. Making the part on the mannequin head is just so much easier for me, honestly, especially when it comes to making a side part these days because I can't see. But yeah, let's install. All right, currently it's 11.34 p.m. Let's see how long this install is going to take. I'm hoping it should be quite easy. Now I'm giving myself an hour because it's really just install because I've basically styled it on the head. But you never know with me, I'm full of surprises. First we're going to go ahead and tint our lace for it to match our skin color. Ooh, look at that deep curve part. Going to be tinting it with my Maybelline Fit Me foundation. Shade 356 Warm Coconut, I believe. And I tint all of my wigs, doesn't matter if it's an HD lace, transparent, whatever, I tint it. But pro tip, let's say like your lace is like darker than your skin tone, it's better to use a little, like a foundation that's like two shades lighter to tint instead of your exact shade, because that way you can try to lighten up the foundation, I mean, <laughs> the lace. Oh, and another thing. If you're like a dark skin or not even dark skin, but if you got like a nice, like, you know, my skin tone and darker right now, a transparent lace probably won't be your best friend. And you might have a hard time tinting it and you're like, dang, why is it not melting? Yeah, transparent lace can be a little bit difficult to melt in my opinion for deeper skin colors. I feel like transparent lace works best for like, you know, more of the fair tone babes like sometimes even I can like manage to finesse transparent lace but even then I'm still struggling the lace will look a little wonky so HD lace is honestly best for every skin tone that matches the best but if you're in a fair tone definitely go with a transparent I'm gonna go in with some edge boost edge control is it called that yeah edge booster and just use this to help push back my edges to get them out of the way because they can get in the way and it can be really annoying especially since these braids are not fresh and then back in with the wig cap and that's just to you know help keep my braids from getting caught in the wig comb that's really the only purpose of why I wear it, so I always make sure I push it to the back like that so it's not going to show, you know, under our wig head. I guess we've got some new scissors. I've been recently investing in, like, more professional, like, hair product tools, and I feel like they do kind of make a difference, like, in flat iron, better brushes. It's still all about your technique, but as you get better, you know, it's okay to invest in getting more professional tools. It just makes, I guess, it easier, I suppose. Uh -huh. 
You see, this is why I like styling my wigs on my mannequin head sometimes, cause like, it just means like look at that. Like this is this is crisp. This look real good. I'm so excited to start it. Ooh, it smells like eat. It smells. I just keep seeing myself. I'm just like, ooh, this install about to be good. Okay, okay, okay. Let me be serious. I need some hair clips. Like, I see videos of people installing their wigs and stuff, and they'll have like the lace, the hair falling in their face. I'm like, how do you not lose your freaking mind? Because maybe it's like the ADHD in me. When I have too much going on around me, I can't. I'm losing it. So things have to be pulled out of my face for me to have a sane workspace. Other side. When you're doing this, just make sure you have the like, the lace like fully fitted. Like let it overlap, like hang over your ear. That way you know exactly where you need to cut. You feel me? All right. Let's get into this lace layer. I feel like I know better, but I'm still not gonna do better. I've been playing around with this bedhead spray. It's like my this is my third time I'm gonna use it. This is what I use all the time for my lace. Love Ebon. She's great. It's a great glueless spray. It's fast drying, has longer hold. No, you can't wear it on your vacation to Cabo. Stop asking that, y'all. It's not waterproof, water resistant. Okay. Can't swim it. You can't get it. I mean, like I can wear it for like two, three days, manage a couple showers with it. I'm like, you know, maintaining my lace and not getting it wet. But it's not like a glue. So that's why the glue is hold, you know? But I've been trying this. I heard this was really good. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I said in a couple of videos recently that I don't like it. That, not that I don't like it, but, like, it's not as good as this. But I'm going to keep working with it. You know, sometimes some things don't work for you at first. got to keep giving it a chance and figuring out how to work with it. So maybe i just keep playing around with it. I'll figure it out. I feel like this definitely, it holds well. But it definitely can't do the whole pool thing like I was saying. Like once I get this wet one time in the shower, even with lace maintenance, it's slipping and sliding. And I feel like the times I've used it, it kind of leaves, leaves like a weird cast on the lace. But I'm going to use it again today just to see how I feel about it. I'm going to be spraying mainly under my lace this time. I usually spray over, but I feel like spraying under... Oh. I feel like spraying under kind of like helps you helps reduce the amount of residue you get on top of your lace so that way it like melts more. Alright, now that I've sprayed that, we're gonna go in with our blow dryer on a warm setting and just start pushing down all the lace so it starts to stick. I feel like my side tabs sometimes don't want to stick at first so I have to like cut the lace and then attempt to stick yeah so because like you see it's already lifted but I already knew that was gonna happen I expected as such the side tabs is needing a little extra reinforcement so what I'm gonna do spray under and I gotta like really make sure I'm spraying up here like back here because yeah. I'm sorry guys, my energy sounds a bit low in this video. That's because it's late, I'm tired, I'm hungry, you know? But I'm trying. I'm gonna pull down some baby hairs right here. And I like to just, I always like pulling down my baby hairs because it helps me pull the lace down even better. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna spray over too. Cause like I said, the side tabs we're needing extra reinforcement. And then we blow again. Okay. 
this one. Let's get it. Next sections. You know what? I lied. I'm gonna spray over. Sue me. I'm human. I can change my mind. I feel like spraying under, like I understand why, but I can't get it like as accurately because the closer you are to the lace, with the doing these middle pieces because they're just so easy I mean compared to the side tabs these middle pieces be real straightforward you feel me I, think I will say that I've learned from wig installs you gotta be really meticulous we get in that lace to lay like when I'm looking at my mirror right here I'm staring at the lace in this little thing I'm using this to really push down that lace that I see sticking up don't just be doing it anyhow like oh my god no like you really gotta find the lace with your eyeball and push it down while you got the blow dryer going and hold it like you pressing it you know it's I'm really just going to save this for last because I know it's about to be a struggle. But, um. <clears throat> oh my god. You got to be intentional with it. Like, I try my best to spray cl closest to, like, the hair, like, down here. Like, I'm not trying to spray up here. That's why your lace gets so crunchy and hard because you're spraying up here. No, babes. You gotta spray down here as close to the tip of the hairline as possible. Try. Ooh. Oh my god. I'm trying to like drag my scissors across while I'm cutting this so like it still has like a jagged cut because I don't want to bluntly cut my lace. Bluntly cutting your lace ends up laying bluntly on your head you know and that's not what you want you want a jagged natural carefree type of lay now i'm just getting a bit impatient i'm just going rogue I'm just doing a bit of both under over whatever gets it there i'm not gonna wait for this to stick down because i know it's not so let's just cut to chit chat. See, one thing I used to do before when I first started installing my wigs that really does help a lot is I would pull out the baby hairs all around the lace, like what I'm doing right now on the sides. And I'll just use that as an anchor all over. My only thing was that was that like it was hard to push the hair back once like I've laid the lace because like all that pushing back of the hair would cause the lace to lift lift all over. But that did really help me get my lace to lay like much easier. Let's spray some on top too. Good good. Dolls are going really good. I just get so excited because it's like, wow, I did that. Then I'm gonna cut it in a nice little diagonal angle, in an angle, you know, short to long. Not too short though. Not a blunt cut, like jagged, like so. You see that? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, now that's nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and curl it. I feel like curling it under works a lot better in my opinion. From what I've been testing out. I'm gonna give it a nice fat curl. Nice and tight, the tighter the better. <laughs> if you know what I mean, I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Same thing on the side. Diagonal chop. Nice and jagged and rough. Okay. I'm gonna have to definitely cut these down. They're a little bit too long now. Exactly what I wanted. One of big dramatic swoops. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna go in and put my elastic band over everything just to let it all sit and set in the shape. <sighs> I 
And I'm just going to go back and re-straighten the hair some more. Just to get it more flat and just to have something to do. A few moments later. Alright. As fabulous and luscious this install is looking, we're just going to do a little extra tweaks just to really, you know, get it to do what it needs to do. I don't know, I'm just really feeling this like hair, like it's just so simple, but it's just it's just a bit of me. It's just a bit of me. So what I'm going in, I'm just trying to like tweeze up a bit some places here and there. This is just me being extra cut me doing too much. Cause sometimes I start doing these little tweaks and stuff, and that's when I ruin the style. I'm like, dang, why do that? Mascara. Well, it's called Cover Your Gray. It's basically just black mascara. I'm just going to use that to fill in some of the over-bleached spots or any little gapping I've got going on. 3.28 a.m. Okay, guys. We have made it to the end of this install. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Yay! <laughs> But look guys, I literally like went ahead and put on my pajamas. I'm like, I'm ready for bed. But I was like, wait, I didn't even film an outro for y'all. But here we go. Boom. I'm probably going to insert a clip with my phone to show you just how long it is. Because I'm a little shorty and my camera can't go that low. But it's very, very long. As far as the quality of this hair, I would say it's super silky and soft as you can see. It's really, really thick, but my only thing I would say about it is that it does like, it, it snags. Like I'm getting some snags here and there, so I can definitely say that it does get some tangling. Like nothing crazy where like it's matted, but then again, it's, it's a brand new install. But it does like, you know, catch in my hand when I run my hands through it. But overall, it's giving. Like this is literally what I envisioned my end product to be like. Ugh. I'm feeling myself like whoop. it's giving. I love this install so much. Like I just love a simple side part. Like side parts are for me. I'm a side part girl. Like you know how I was like bust down 40 inch middle part. I'm a bust down deep side part 30 40 inches. Like that's that's gonna do it for me, baby. Like okay. Like ah uh, yes. I love it. I love this so much. Okay. Like you see that part? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm so sad that I have to take this wig off. Like, yes, I could just, you know, put an elastic band and wrap it and go to sleep like that. But <sighs> but I'm someone who doesn't like sleeping with a lot of hair on their head. Like, I, I purposely like to wear glueless wigs because I don't like sleeping with my wig on. Like, my head gets hot. I feel like I have like a sensory thing. That's why I can't do lashes either. Like I don't like having things on my face and on my head when I'm sleeping or when I'm stressed. Like I'll rip it all out, you know? So I'm going to be taking this wig off. But I was like, I'm going to take it off with y'all because you did follow me on this journey to install it. So it's only fair if I take the wig off with y'all. So I'm going to show you guys how I take off my wig. So sad to see her go. But yeah. All I do is just get some water and spray on the lace because like... It comes off really easy with water. And I just kind of like pat the water in and massage it. And I can feel it starting to loosen up. And look at that. Just like that. Boom. Bam. Ooh. There you go. Edges safe. Everything's still good. And what I like about taking off my wigs at night is that reinstall is going to be really easy. I literally just everything back in place. And this way, you know when you sleep in your wig, especially like a straight wig, it does get like little crimps and crooks in it unless you're going to wrap it. And who really be wrapping their wigs like that, you know? But all right, with that said, I bid you guys adieu, a good night. And I thank you so much for watching this video, following me along this lovely, fine journey. Yep, that's my story. I'm going to go to bed now, but yeah, like I was saying, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. But yeah, I don't really know how to end this. My brain is so confuzzled. I'm just tired. But I'll see you guys in another one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you're amazing. You're great.
who <laughs> now me trying to be a motivational speaker <laughs> But no, for real, y'all are amazing and you're great because you're you. Duh, the fuck? Okay, anyways, bye. I love you guys. Good night. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Goodbye.